Okay, assalamu alaikum everyone on the channel. Um, I'm joined here with Brother Sadi uh, today to go through um, uh, David Ewing Jr.'s, one of his books, one of his earliest books, Tartaria, Ancient Greece, which is apparently mm -hmm. not so ancient. Assalamu alaikum, Sadi. Welcome to my brother. Let's go. How are you doing? You good? Alhamdulillah. 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 Okay. So obviously we've been going through a lot of David Ewing Jr. material recently. And uh, now that now that we've caught each other at the right time, it seems, um, I thought this might be a good time to quickly go through one of his books. What do you think? It, it would be. And uh, I have I've, uh, I've heard of, I've only recently gotten on the David Ewing Jr. Uh, at train so to speak <laughs> and uh, i've been watching his uh, interviews with uh, uh, rafael from mm -hmm. at like you know yeah and i'm five episodes in from mm -hmm. i feel like what this guy says is it just i know in my heart he's saying the truth i just feel it i cannot mm -hmm. explain it mm -hmm. and uh, it's it, it has uncovered a lot of things i already felt from before you yeah. know so yeah. that's the strange part because uh in, in the only other person who has done this for me was Sheikh Imran Hussein because mm -hmm. when Sheikh Imran Hussein used to speak, I used to feel like this man is saying the truth. I just know it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I feel the same with uh, Brother David Ewing. And I want to say that uh, for uh, so far from my study of the interviews mm -hmm. uh, and and from previous thoughts that I've already had. My understanding of history is kind of divided into three portions now, and I hope you can uh, yeah, yeah, comment go. on it. Yeah, yeah. First, and and uh, that video you made, uh, the anti delivery nightmare, that was a good video. So I wanted, I, I want to say that the three three parts mm. of history mm -hmm. are first of all, it is pre Adamic history before Allah created Adam. So, mm. uh, and. Uh, the the justification I get from it was I forgot the specific Quranic verse, but remember when Allah uh, when the Quran was mentioning that when Allah was creating uh, Adam and the angels protested that why are you creating something is uh, creating a species that will create havoc again? You know, mm -hmm. you remember that yeah, verse, yeah, right? Yeah. It's uh, it's it, it's as if the angels were. Earth. Yeah, the representative. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Allah was sending Adam as a new caliph on the earth. Mm -hmm. So it, it was as if the angels were recollecting a prior civilization, which caused mayhem in in the in the earth in the universe. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in my opinion, that that was the jinn civilization. Uh, that was the jinn civilization that Allah was talking about, mm -hmm. and uh, that that is the first portion. The second portion of uh, History is the uh, the giants. So we know from our study of biogeology now, and mm. all of these evidences, all of this money, it it, it might it, that's the pre diluvian civilization, in my mm. opinion. Those were the giants mm. before before the before the uh, before the flood. I believe that giants existed, mm. and uh, the earth was uh, the earth was very very different, and it was suited to the existence of giants. And the third portion of history now, which is the uh, like, uh, which is basically the uh, what do you call, it? like human beings like us, you know, post diluvian after yes. the flood. Since the this flood. is the, this is the era of Mo Moses, Jesus, and uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this particular portion of history mm. is, is has two subcategories. One is the old world, mm. and one is the new world. And the new new world is uh, where we are right now, mm. post-industrialization. And the old world is that kingdom, mm. uh, basically the kingdom of God, Tartaria, or the global Islamic civilization that David Ewing Jr. was talking about. Mm. That, is, that, in my opinion, is the old world. Mm. So the Quran is talking about the 124,000 prophets. I believe that these 124,000 prophets were divided across the old world in 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 the post delivian time period and in the pre delivian time period it, it it there were giant prophets i believe mm. 
So this is what I was thinking. Let me know what you think about this. Yeah, so no, no. It seems no I, I like it. I like, I like the breakdown. I like the categorization. And to be honest with you, until you brought it up, I never really thought of pre-Adam, uh, alayhi salam. But since you've mentioned it, and I look back at those verse, that verse, and I've looked at that verse again, about when people are debating about whether Iblis was an angel or not, because it still mm -hmm. really is. If I'm honest with you, it's not clear. It's not clear, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, and I think you'll agree with me. It's not clear. It's, it's uh, I think you'd be a fool to say, uh, you know, clearly one way or the other, because the, one of those Quran ayats does say that all of them, the angels bowed down except Iblis. Now we can say that, yes, we know that Iblis was made of fire, right? And we can mm -hmm. say that angels uh, don't have any free will, and all of these things make sense, but at the same time, when you look at that Quran ayah, there's something missing <laughs> from our understanding. Uh, yeah, exactly. And for me, I I actually lean more towards that. I, I'm not saying in concrete, but I lean more towards the fact that he was a jinn because hmm. uh, I believe that Iblis was not uh, fully an angel. Yes, but he was holding counsel with the angels. Well, you're not. Allah you're not the first. Him. I've heard. Yeah. I've heard great scholars, yeah, people that, I think, uh, if I'm right in my understanding, Allah forgive me if I'm wrong, people, someone can correct me. I think even At-Tabri, yeah, At-Tabri mm -hmm. has mentioned in his tafsir that, you know, there is this difference of opinion. They say, some say that um, this jinn was um, a part or, or a lower level of the mm -hmm. army of angels, if you, if exactly. you can say Something like this. So there is something missing in our understanding of this. That that much Definitely. is true. Yeah. And uh, uh, when when the angels were recollecting this, I, I I think I've read this from authentic sources. I'm not sure. I don't I don't remember if it was the Quran. I don't think so. But I was reading from authentic sources that it, there was a, a big war before humanity, and that Iblis was a, was a fighting alongside. The angels against the uh, against the other jinn that were causing mayhem. There was a jinn civilization that mm. was creating mayhem on the earth, and Iblis fought alongside the angels to eradicate the civilization. I think it was the it's 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 a biblical it's a biblical uh, uh, narration, right. or maybe it was hadith. I don't particularly right. remember. Yeah, but uh, evidence is pointing that pointing towards that it that story is true. Mm. And that Iblis was holding counsel with the angels, mm. and that his fall from grace now his fall from grace is mentioned in the Quran, right? So yes, there now we there have is a turning. That, so there is a turning. So there is a turning. There is a turning. The transformation. So the Quran, there was a transformation trans exactly. Yeah. The Quran establishes two things. It establishes establishes that Iblis had a fall from grace, had a turning, mm. and the other establishment is that the angels were recollecting. A past past civilization. Mm -hmm. So from these we can connect the dots, and as Sheikh Ramadan Hussein says, if other sources corroborate the Quran, mm -hmm. then you can accept those sources, right? That's it. So that is always the method. Those other sources, yeah. There is always the method. Those yeah. other sources say that there was a there was a war, mm -hmm. there was a war, and the jinn civil there was a jinn civilization causing mayhem, mm -hmm. and Iblis fought alongside these angels and. Mm -hmm. You know, cl cleared them basically. Right. So then, Iblis's fall from grace was when he refused to prostrate, right. when Allah was creating the second, uh, the Adam, the human human beings. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was I think the first aspect, the first aspect of history. And then we also had the giants, and I think you know more about me on this topic, giants. But I, I know mean, enough to say you know. that there were giants. On, on there I were giants as much as you and do. Most likely. It most likely was before the flood. Yeah. I believe the flood was the turning point, mm -hmm. which changed uh, human biology because yep. it was so catastrophic, yep. so terrifying yep. that it literally now uh, these remains of these petrified organs. Mm. I believe they were from the time of the flood. Absolutely, and the flood was so catastrophic it completely changed our biology, cooked. and we became cooked. what we are cooked. today. Cooked yeah, it organs. cooked us. Yeah, exactly. Cooked organs. Yeah. Cooked us exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. and and exactly. and why and, the, and then why would they hide it? Because because if we knew, then then that would be the ultimate snapping everyone out of their sleep 
of this atheism, of this exactly. materialism. If everyone could exactly. see the signs for what they are on this earth, that Allah's divine wrath came down, you know, uh, on this earth. And that is what is being hidden, ultimately. That's what it seems. That the signs mm. of Allah's prophets, the signs of his, of their great works, their great civilizations, their great te technologies, as well as Allah's divine wrath, these things are being hidden for good reason. Just like, just like the existence of uh, this creation that we live in, the reality of it is being hidden. But yeah, I don't want to get uh, too much off track. But this this was a great beginning because hopefully if this just, goes... Just, just, yep. just one, one more thing. And then, yeah, after the destruction of the giants, now we have the, our modern human biology, which we have now. Mm -hmm. And that is divided basically into the old world and the new world. And the old world is basically what David doing Jr. talks about that a global Islamic civilization mm -hmm. and that uh, there are so many evidences there, mm. there is Arabic evidence of Arabic architecture, Arabic language all over the world, mm. and that is the old world where, where many prophets were leading this. And the main characters are the Prophet Moses, Prophet Isa, and Prophet Muhammad. Yes, okay. And now we have the new world, whereby in the new world, all, all the evidence of the old world is uh, covered or eradicated or changed, mm. the history is revised, and now we are in the situation we are in today. So that, mm. that's my take. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but it was great the way you started with um, uh, pre uh, Adamic civilization, if you like, um, Ibl Iblis's fall, because uh, if this goes well, then this is going to finish up right back to uh, Iblis. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. okay. So, without any further ado, let's just quickly go through this book. I don't want to go through all of it, but just the main bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you and feel this. free to. Put in what bits you feel like you need to put in as well as I go through this. Okay. Um, but I want to begin with the moon's orbit taking place on uh, <laughs> what date was it? The moon's orbit, where is it? 19th July. Where is it? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So 19th July 1969 is when the moon, the moon was orbited, apparently. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was uh, walked on, right? Yeah. No, that was on twentieth July, but they reached the orbit of the moon. Okay, okay, okay. I understand. Nineteenth. Yeah. So there was a there was nineteenth on that. Um, yeah, the moon landing, Neil Armstrong. Okay, so nineteen pilot astronauts. Are you familiar with this? So there was nineteen pilot astronauts. What I do know is that there was nineteen pilot astronauts, and there was a nineteen second call that took place as mm -hmm. well. 19 second call. <laughs> so there was a phone call that took uh, 19 seconds. So let me just get to the. How do you even make this stuff up? It's like well, crazy. this is just the beginning. There's only one of his 19 books. I think. I think he just wrote his 20th book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay. April 19 was apparently when they had the inspiration. April 19. Okay, they enter the moon's orbit from 19th of July. Okay. Um, look at this. But, oh, check this one out. Michael Collins mm. said that Buzz Aldrin had eaten oatmeal 19 times since they left Earth. Mm. Yeah. It is, there is actually no reason to say that. Exactly. Why would you say that? Exactly. It's all about probabilities. It's, it's improbable mm. that things would happen like this. Um, he wrote his father on April 19th. Then Neil Armstrong will be on the list. Look at that. I, I missed that one. Mm. Um, yes, yeah, so inspiration on April 19th. Um, Nineteen minutes after Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin was a, allegedly the second man on the moon. I, I didn't even remember reading that the first time I read it. 19 minutes after Neil Armstrong, yeah? That's when Buzz Aldrin <laughs> set foot on the moon. Three. All right. 1933. On 19th August. Mm. All right. Where's 19th August? I've got that written. Oh, here it is. On 19th August, Adolf Hitler became the Fuhrer of Germany. Yeah? Why 19th August? So all of these dates. All right. Mm. Um, 
What about Bermuda Triangle? Are you familiar with B Bermuda Triangle? Of course. Yeah. What is the flight number? 19. 19. Yeah. Right. Um, so that disappeared. But the best bit, the reason why I want to bring this up is because this is the one that nobody has seen. The Antarctic Ice Wall, yeah? The apparent Antarctic mm. Ice Wall. Okay, so you know about this whole Agatha and Hollow Earth. Are you familiar with it? The stories? Yeah, I know a bit about it, yeah. The... Same here. I can see why people got freaked out a year ago. Um, because maybe they're familiar with these parts of the story. So mm. it's interesting to know. And and you know what? Yeah. You know, just like how you said, listening to David Ewing Jr., you feel like that this guy is resonating with so much truth in a way when you first started listening to Sheikh Imran Hussain, yeah? Yeah, that, that's how truth is, isn't it? It resonates. You can just tell. It's it resonates. Like, it, you can it, just it tell. Yeah. So same thing with this Antarctic ice wall and Admiral Byrd. Something never felt right. I just looked yeah. at it. I didn't accept it. I didn't reject it. There's something just for okay, whatever. I'm not even focused. It it it, 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 it it's like uh, now that I reflect upon it because uh, it, it because initially even I was like uh, maybe there is truth to it, but reflecting upon it, it's like. It's as if they wanted you to think that this is an alternative viewpoint. Yeah. Like, they why, why Why do we know? Why do we know that Admiral Byrd has been there? Why is it Why is it a famous thing, you know? Exactly. Like if, exactly. If it was we a, meant a drama know. taking place back then. Exactly. Just like 9-11 was a drama on everyone's screens, TVs, what took place with Admiral Byrd back then was on everyone's radar for good reason media wanted and this is this is one this is one story that the uh, uh truther community really latches on to yeah the, oh you know admiral bird has been there yeah yeah okay um but check this out okay so where is it so antarctic story is false like space this is what i got from reading david ewing jr's thing 19 pictures of mars yeah so in space you've got 19 pictures of mars um, so this is suspiciously invented the North and South Pole let me just see if I can right look at this Admiral Byrd this journey took 19 hours to complete he was the first to fly Yeah, it took 19 hours to complete <laughs> when he <laughs> returned celebration dinner was held on July 19 Yeah. They saw the first icebergs on the borders of Antarctica on December 19th. Oh, and look at the cows, yeah? The cows that they took with them to Antarctica. Wait, Admiral's bird, Admiral Bird's team spent 19 months on the ice. Um, estimated total is 19 men that went with him. Yeah. Okay, U.S. bear sank on 19th March. Anyway, I don't want to go through all of this, but you're getting the picture. Yeah. People can I get, I get the point. Yeah, you, uh, 19, I'm just going to read them out, what I've got here on my notes. So Agatha, Admiral Byrd, uh, 19th February 1947, that was Agatha, 19-hour flight to South Pole. The celebration dinner took place on July 19th, 1927. A baby calf was born December 19, 19 months on the ice they spent, and this was sponsored by National Geographic, yeah, National Geographic, mm. all of this what took mm. place, there was 19 men, including Admiral Byrd, uh, 19th January 1934 was the second expedition, 19th January 1935 uh, was their base arrival, 19th March 1963 was when the ship sank, Big media show like 9-11. This was what this was yeah. back then. This is what they wanted everyone to see back then. Yeah. And this is what still to this day. Um so and okay, so that's Admiral Bird. We looked at a little bit of uh Neil Armstrong, we looked a little bit of Hitler, Bermuda Triangle, Admiral Bird, and just a little bit now on history. Yeah. So obviously, this is all about ancient Greece, this book. So if you look at history. 
if you go as far back as Socrates, you're familiar with these, right? Of course, of course. Yeah. Socrates. Socrates, yeah. Okay, Aristotle, Plato, Socrates. Uh, again, I don't think I'm going to find it. I'm just going to read some of these if I can't find them. Okay, Socrates was age 19 when he met great philosophers. Aristotle, student of Plato for mm. 19 years. The, they, they found, apparently, that the sun was 19 times further and wider. On 19th June, 240. What the hell? Yeah, mm. exactly. Um, what else do they have? They have Ephesus. They have Turkey. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, here we go. And look, you can just tell anyway, when school makes a big deal about teaching these things at the very beginning, Mm. that's when you know, okay, there's something off. Why are they pushing to teach this at the very beginning? Of mm. all history, and we know what real history is, which is in the Quran, which is being hidden, why would they teach this stuff? Uh, well, why doesn't the Quran mention ancient Greece? Why mm. doesn't the Quran mention ancient uh, Egypt? Right? Mm. Since it, Because Allah told us in the Quran, mm. it came down to explain all things. Yeah. Yeah. All things. The yeah. Quran mentions the story of Musa. It mentions the Pharaoh, mm -hmm. but it never mentions this, uh, you know, this ancient ancient Egyptian or ancient Greek civilization, like this rich tradition that they had. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There would be at least even some mention of it. Some mention. So that's what okay. So if, if 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 Greece was the purveyor of philosophy, purveyor of knowledge, purveyor of human understanding. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't the Quran point to ancient Greece and give them credit for it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is, yeah, so this is what's interesting. So when you start to realize, and this is why you, um, it's very important to realize that a lot of this is uh, nonsense that has been created. And there's a reason why. So if you think about it, Admiral Byrd, yeah, Freemason, yeah, um, and this whole ancient uh, Greece fake, fake, what is the problem with this? Because if this is fake, then what about St. Paul? What about the Bible origins? Yeah, if you think about the Bible origins, which connects to St. Paul and uh, all of this Ephesus, I think Turkey, um, you know, the apostles, the New Testament, wh where did this come from? Who created them? This is what happens, and this is why people don't want to question the, and this David code isn't. nineteen. Yeah, this uh, thing that David Irving has uncovered about this number nineteen. Hmm. We can have three three logical uh, outcomes. One is that either these historical events happened, but on different dates, and they but but the but the, it's narrated to us that it was nineteen nineteen nineteen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Second, this they never happened, mm. and it's all made up with this code nineteen. And the third is that they might have happened, but and then but the dates were different, but they report to us that it's nineteen nineteen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like it's quite confusing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's confusing. Yeah. Uh, but I like how you said it's not that it's entirely false. There's some aspects to mm. it that are true. Yes, uh, when it is, how much of it is. But I mean, look uh, again. If people go through this book, they'll find these images of these apparent ancient uh, remains. <laughs> they're not ancient. Mm. Yeah, it's funny how mm. he destroys a lot of these. They're they're not ancient at all. They're very new, um, and it's no wonder one of the brothers. Uh, so one of the brothers um, I was speaking to. Uh, a few weeks back, um, apparently he was actually on one of those Zoom calls with Sheikh Omar Baluch in the early days when we used to do Surah Kaf Tafsir. And I still remember that call when he mentioned about um, going to Ephesus and how demonic it felt going to Ephesus in Turkey and how people felt really like troubled and possessed, like there was some kind of negative spiritual energy there. But now, you, you know, looking at a lot of this stuff, really? you realize... Mm -hmm you realize why <laughs> that place is very unholy. Um, mm. And especially if it's connected to or somewhere near where Isa alayhi salam must have been um, not crucified, yeah. what yeah. can you say? Apparently the yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. The Constantinople. And people yeah. should go and look at it itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um let's wrap up in a few minutes. Yes, let's... definitely, definitely, definitely. Okay. All right. While while you're going through it, I will just say that uh, because I've seen a lot of uh, uh, a lot of lashback at David's work in 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 these groups that we're in. Okay. And what I wanted to say is what I wanted to say is that what is David's main premise of his work? If you, I mean, I have I haven't read his books. I've only listened to the interviews. It's all he's supporting the Quran. It's Absolutely. he's saying that the Quran is this the only book mm. the quran is the only book which has predicted all of these events mm -hmm. it is the only book which uh, stands firm against these people the ruling class who are who have revisioned our history it is the only book which provides us solutions to this and it is the only book which links us to our actual history Absolutely. it is the only book Absolutely. So that's David's premise. Mm. That's David's premise. So what part of his work do you find uh, like attack worthy? I don't I don't understand. No, if no. you say that oh he's wrong with the timelines, mm. he's wrong with the timelines and he uh, the timelines cannot be mistaken, then you follow the uh, the conventional timeline which tells you that uh, Islam basically fell at the Renaissance. After the Renaissance, Islam is invalid, and European uh, secular ideology is superior. You know what I mean? Yeah. But what David is saying is that the Renaissance was done to cover up this Islamic civilization that was that basically brought Jerusalem peace mm -hmm. in the whole world. It was a utopia. The Renaissance came about as a means to destroy that and to revision our entire history. That's what David is saying. But the conventional yeah. timeline is saying that basically Islam uh, ceased to become relevant at the Renaissance. Yeah. So the you tell me which is... Was a, re was a reset, that Renaissance, yeah. Yeah. So you guys tell me what is more in, in support of the Quran, right? Yeah, and of the evidence, yeah, it's shows. It, it, it's down to people like me and you who are who don't have anything invested in mm -hmm. holding on to some of these false uh, things that the we timeline, do. the timeline, yeah, the yeah, conventional those, timeline. those who are holding on to that. It's it, for some people, it's too much cognitive dissonance. You know, it's too much, too much shakiness, too much imbalance. Um, mm -hmm. it, 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 yeah, I, I think, think some of us were just so used to so much, we're okay with it. Some people, it's just too much, yeah. The other thing is, uh, some people have said that uh, they don't identify with David's uh, suggested timelines because uh, uh, the Islamic uh, hadith manuscripts, mm. they, the hadith manuscripts and, the, you know, these stories about these Islamic philosophers learning from the works of the Greek philosophers. You know about this, right? Yep, yep. Imam Ghazali, learning yep, from yep. the Greeks. This is why I've held back on all yeah. of this. I'm glad you brought them up. I all just... of this history. Yep. So one, one point of refutation from our brothers is that uh, David's suggested alternate timeline contradicts all of these, uh, the, the Isnad, you know, that yeah. because the Isnad, Isnad is synchronized. That the Jesuits love, yeah? With... The Jesuits love for the Muslims to be involved. Yeah, ex Exactly. The the Isnad synchronizes with the timeline that the Greeks came before the Muslims. They laid the foundations of all of this philosophy and the Muslims built upon that work and then the golden age of Islam came. Why it all lines you, up why so do you perfect. Think you have, why do you think Sheikh Hamza Yusuf says geocentrism, heliocentrism, they're both correct. It's all relative. Why do you think he says exactly. that? Exactly. Why do you think he says that? So, so He's a clever man. So he, our brother... Exactly. Our, our brothers really love that, you know, Islam, oh, we built upon the foundations laid upon by the Greeks. Mm -hmm. So you can see that their love of the Isna, mm -hmm. it, it binds them to this timeline, the conventional timeline. But what we're saying is, okay, we're not saying that the Hadith doesn't exist, Isna doesn't exist, our rich scholarly tradition does exist. 
But how can you be so sure that the manuscripts you have and all of these Islamic his history books that you have, mm. that they, the manuscripts themselves are not forged? That you you have what the actual manuscript sa said. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, so, did, you, did you understand what I mean? I totally yeah. understood. They're holding on to a lot which they can't say for sure themselves you know, whether it's solid. All they can say is that this is what has come from our forefathers. And this exactly. is what we carried exactly. forward. But can, can they themselves say for sure? Can they convince themselves, let alone ourselves? Forget convincing ourselves. Can they convince themselves that this is legit, what they're holding on to? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we 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 had this uh, rich scholarly tradition of isnad you know we 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 have this the manuscripts are there mm. how can you be sure that the manuscripts we have because we have the manuscripts mm. that are after the after colonization yeah after the english the italians the french the dutch the spanish the portuguese yeah after they after they invaded all of the muslim world Mm -hmm. And God knows what they did, other than what we already know, and what David Ewing Jr. says. Mm -hmm. How can and I am absolutely sure that they whitewashed whitewashed most of our manuscripts. Yeah. So how can you be sure that the manuscripts that you have, mm -hmm. we have, are the manuscripts that were originally meant to be relayed down to us? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. How can because be because so sure? basically enough bearded men were bought. Yeah um with titles and yeah people trusted these authorities these newly installed authorities that were placed and so therefore yeah. it was passed on and yeah it, you know just how all of these lies are uh propagated and the longer they continue the harder they are for people to let go of that's what it is exactly. uh, we know how the quran is preserved and david also elaborates on this and, and david david uh, points out many times that <clears throat> Uh, the why <clears throat> sorry why did these colon colonialists find it so difficult to eradicate the Quran because the Quran was always being memorized always mm -hmm. it always being memorized throughout the Muslim world yep. but the same cannot be said for Hadith because mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. because if the Hadith was being memorized then mm -hmm. the Isnad mm -hmm. would be much larger because let's say brother always you live in the time of the colonial period. And you're memorizing hadith, right? Mm. So the hadith chain would be like, I heard, uh, brother always heard from this person, from that person, you know, you would be included. That mm. means you are part of the narr chain of narration. Mm -hmm. So you're not part of the chain of narration. That means the chain of narration has already stopped. Mm. That means they can go and revise the manuscripts. And mm. the Sahih Bukhari or the Sahih Muslim that you have on your shelf mm. might not it, it might only have a 50% similarity mm. to the original Sahih Bukhari or Sahih Muslim. I hope yeah, yeah. that gets my point. Yeah, yeah. I'd just rather not go into those messy, sticky areas about Hadith and uh, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim and that. For me, for me, it's easier to prove and disprove things that are in the Quran and things that we know for history. But as soon as we start touching upon these Hadith areas, oh, that's, a, that's a messy, messy area for me. Um, yeah, and and it and it gets attacked. People yeah, attack us. Exactly, exactly. Yes. And people get very emotional about that. With the Quran, people just leave you alone and they run away. Mm -hmm. They run in the opposite direction. They shut down. Uh, they they label you something or they just run away. But with hadith, they 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 want to start a war over it. <laughs> they want to. Uh, well, our our latest video when we posted our interview with the David, uh, sorry, not our brother Imran's interview with uh, David Ewing, mm -hmm. it got attacked, and you can tell those people they didn't even watch the video. They says, "Are you saying the Quran isn't preserved? Are you saying the Quran isn't preserved? Yeah. Are you saying Jerusalem is not mentioned in the Quran?" Yeah, bro, yeah. have you even watched the video? Come on. Yeah, uh, David never said, nor nor did we ever say the Quran isn't preserved. Actually, mm. we're making a stronger case for the Quran being preserved mm. because yeah. they could never eradicate the Quran. These colonialists, they could well, never do that. They will never be able to do it because the Quran, as yeah. Sheikh Imran Hussein says, mm. it exists in the world of sound. Mm. It's an auditory phenomenon. It is yeah. always being memorized, Ikra even if you. As exactly. We that surah, Ikra, recite, yeah? Ikra is recite, Kirat, Kari, 
Yeah, what's your favorite exactly. Ari? It's recite. Yes, absolutely. Sheikh Imran Hussain is right. It belongs to the world of sound. It's also written down. Yes, it also can be read. Yes, but yes. primarily, but, yes. But the, but but the written down. It's a record of the Quran. It is not the Quran itself. That's it. That's it's it. a record. That's right. And that's why he's also. Quran. That's why he's also right about the harakat. These are all additional. Exactly. These exactly. The protected, preserved. He's right about all of these things. The more you look at them, the more. And this is what Brother Yusuf said once as well that <laughs> Sheikh Imran Hussein has a knack of being right uh, about many things, you know, as time goes on. Um, but yeah, let's just keep this on point. Let's try to wrap this up because the main point. J just my, my, yeah. my last point was I'm yeah. wrap up is that. Yeah. Is that so? You can never destroy the Quran because how can you destroy something that you cannot even touch? Right. You cannot touch the Quran. You yeah. cannot touch the Quran, so yeah. you cannot destroy it. Yeah. What you can destroy is the Quranic manuscripts because these are just records. Well, you well can, look, you can, I mean, the funny, can burn, yeah, the funny thing is, Allah yeah, uses the these word, people, yeah, on, sorry, sorry, sorry. these people can burn Quranic manuscripts. I think there is some, uh, there. Uh, I, I won't go into that. That's too much now. These mm. people can burn Quranic manuscripts. They can throw the Quranic manuscripts in the River Nile mm. because those are just records. They mm. can never touch the Quran. The Quran exists in the world of sound. They cannot mm. touch it. So they cannot destroy what they cannot touch. So yeah, that's that's it from my side. Go on. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I just wanted to add one thing that that word that Allah uses, hid, yeah? The word yeah. for guarding the Quran is hid. So it's not a coincidence that we have Hufad uh, doing his of the Quran, and this is how it is protected. This is how it is guarded. Uh, I'm sure and the, other and the, ways. And the biggest service we can do to the deen hmm. is raise children who memorize the Quran, because yeah, yeah. you have you have a living Quran now in his. Yep. yep. Alhamdulillah, my nephew. And Quran the, is there in, in. Yeah, it's good to see it continue the tradition. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so just quickly back on to Iblis, yeah, that whole question about Iblis's nature, the fall, um, uh, hopefully bringing that back full circle through this, and I will be cutting out bits from the video that's not necessary, but with, um, so if you look at this book, this first book of uh, David Ewing Jr.'s Ancient Greece, he gets to this point towards the end of the book, researchers such as An Anatoly Fomenko, because um, obviously you're familiar that his work is based on Anatoly Flamenco's timeline, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So he says that others I, have... Uh, I intend to read Anatoly's books as well. Yeah. yeah. So he says researchers such as Anatoly Flamenco. so by the way, if those who are listening aren't familiar, this is a professor from uh, U uh, Moscow University, State Moscow, was it? Mos Mos Moscow State University in State Russia. University, yeah. Uh, a professor. Um Okay, so researchers such as Anatoly Fomenko and others have stated that the history of the ancient Greeks is a fraud. Researchers have shown evidence that the history of ancient Greece was fraudulent, fraudulently invented during and after the Renaissance period. So this is what you were talking about earlier. Yeah, it's about this period. This was the reset in which they were able to destroy and implement what it is that they wanted uh, for everyone to believe in and learn mm -hmm. and practice and repeat um so on the yeah so even byzantine by byzant or byzantine yeah the byzantine empire that was created by copying athens and editing it yeah um the eastern roman empire yeah all of these so if you look at them they use things that were real and they just replace them with the names or, you know, they make changes. And this has always been the satanic pattern. I don't know if you remember when we used to mm -hmm. uh, listen to Anthony, Anthony Patch as well. This is a satanic pattern. Mm -hmm. Doesn't come up with anything new. He can't create anything new. He can only mm -hmm. use what's already there and twist it mm -hmm. or turn it upside down and alter it slightly and then reintroduce it as what it mm -hmm. is that uh, he wants mm -hmm. or his followers want. So this yeah. makes sense, you know. Yeah. But, uh, if you dig, you'll find what is the reality, like Suleiman alayhi salam and uh, Queen Sheba, the story being uh, retold as, what was it? I can't remember. Did you come across it? Um, no, I don't remember either. Yeah, so they come up with new names, basically, and they sell them as romantic stories. If you, if you Well, look... I think, uh... sorry, I was confusing the story of Moses uh, with Ahenadim. Mm. That was not so to me. No. 
Yeah, but that's another example. Yeah, changing things. Okay, so anyway, so all of this comes into question. Let's try to wrap this up. So fake Bible, fake history. What about the eschatology that comes with that, this fake Bible? Everything comes into question ultimately. Um, well, the, uh, regarding eschatology, we all we know about the book of Revelation. Exactly. Oh, and here it is. <laughs> right, right. And uh, yeah, so all of that is now in question. Um, so, you know, how much of this is prophecy and how much of this is actually people trying to bring about quote unquote prophecy, but actually it's their plans that they want, you know, uh, certain religious fools believing that is prophecy. Um, okay. But, Psychomaniacs. Yep. Exactly. That, that that is now ringing true more than ever. Eschatomania. Um, okay, so now he links this whole 19 conspiracy. So I, I think me and you had spoken uh, about this when we were listening to him. It, it seems to be that these people have been coming up with one 19 conspiracy after another, tracing back as far as maybe even the uh, apparent crucifixion of Isa alayhi salam. We know he wasn't crucified. We know he did not die. Um, but even this, this whole fooling people that they killed their Messiah. And, the, you know, this is like another, this is like the, the probably the biggest con, I think, that David Ewing Jr. says. And this was also, this had 19 written all over it as well. But what's interesting is how David finds this 19 pattern throughout all of these cons, yeah, all of this fake history, and he links it back to the Quran in Surah Muddathir, but not in the way of the Rashad Khalifa Quranist followers with their mathematical uh, messed up formula, you know, codes. Well, I, I yeah. particularly, I don't have any uh, knowledge about that because, right. well, I, I know, I do know Rashad Khalifa was a Quranic Quranist character. Yeah, I, uh, and and he was assassinated. But what what did he specifically find? What was his research? There? Well, I, I'll, yeah, I can sum it up for you in this this way. Uh, because my attention was drawn to him because a sister, when we were looking into the shape of the earth, she said when people would say that the earth is egg shaped, uh, which is something that um, Zakir Naik is famous for saying. Uh, but recently, even Muhammad Hijab is. Uh, has gone public saying in the last year or two saying that we have to move away from this because there is nothing there is nothing connecting us to be able to legitimately say that this is actually in the Quran that the earth is egg shaped but when you dig where did this come from it came from this man Rashad Khalifa who used to be on tour with um, Sheikh Ahmad Didat back in the day so he goes quite far back and who was this man he was some kind he was some Egyptian uh, mathematician or computer scientist in the days when computers were still very rare it was in its early days so if mm -hmm. someone had a computer and they said that you know they were finding things you just probably take their word for it because you had no idea what a computer was and what it could do but you mm -hmm. just took you know just like how we do today you just say people with white lab coats you know rocket science and okay i accept whatever you say <laughs> So same mm -hmm. thing with him. He would come and say that he's found this code 19 in the Quran. You know, he'd punch everything in and he'd say, look, it's 19 all over. But there was a flaw to this whole thing, uh, which was it didn't fit in two areas of the Quran. And so therefore, mm -hmm. what did he do to make sure that the 19 did fit? He then turned around and said that these two verses don't belong in the Quran. Can you see mm -hmm. what it's Yeah, so this is all um, messing up thing. This is just pure misguidance and it's no wonder he was assassinated um i think by salafis <laughs> i think i'm not mm. sure um but the thing is the main point is that people don't connect to this egg-shaped earth thing that they it came from him and um and that today even the fitna of all of the quranists that you see out there um I think from what I can tell, they also kind of hide the fact that they are big Russian Khalifa followers because they are somewhat, I think, embarrassed to know that, you know, that this guy claimed to be a prophet. He was assassinated. Uh, so they don't want to say it out publicly, do they? Um, but that's what it is. That's what it seems to be. This whole uh, Quran, Quranism and Russian Khalifa, they seem to be uh, inseparable as far as I can tell. Inseparable. Yeah. 
um, because it's all based on mathematics and science, you know, uh, mm-hmm. where it doesn't belong in the Quran. This is where the problem is. You know, today we're we're all part of this whole system of trying to, what is it, reconcile the Quran with science and trying to say that the Quran is the truth because it confirms science, whereas actually it's, you're creating problems. It's the other it's, way. It's, it's yeah. flipped, yeah. I was just about to say it's flipped because you filter you filter science and through the Quran. Right, right. You don't filter the Quran through science. Yeah, but what so people do today good. is that, okay, if something is apparently a scientific fact, they say, oh, we can impose it here. Oh, look, it says it here in the Quran. And this is what they do, you know, with this 19 thing. But anyway, so uh, David Ewing, inshallah, will do something with David. I think he's got a lot more on this, but he's the first one to finally complete this picture for me on this whole code 19 nonsense. Mm. Whereas it, for them, it stems because of this one eye in the Quran. So there's only one eye in the Quran that Allah actually mentions this 19 being a test, mm. but they apply it everywhere in the Quran. So what David yeah. Ewing Jr. does with this 19 conspiracy, he now links it back to this 19, but in the correct way. So, yeah, before I show you that, was there something you were going to say? Is it that verse that uh, over it is 19? Exactly. That verse, right? exactly. A very famous one. So now let's just wrap up by looking at this there. So if there's all of these 19 patterns written everywhere, what is it that is said about that in the Quran? So let's go to it. So he says, the Arabic Quran warned humanity about the number 19 in chapter 74 when no one else did. So just like how you were saying, how he's he's promoting the Quran. So actually, let's just go to those verses. Right. You can see this? Yeah? Yeah, I can see. Okay. So that day will be a difficult day. Hold on. For the disbelievers, not easy. Let me make mm. this smaller. For the disbelievers, not easy. Leave me with the one I created alone. Mm. And to whom I granted extensive wealth. And children present. Yeah? Mm. You can probably start to get a picture who Allah is speaking of. And spread everything before him, easing his life. Mm. Then he desires that I should add more. Mm. Who is it that sounds ungrateful, that wants everything in his world? Mm. Mm. One percent. Yeah, that I should add more. No, mm. indeed. He has been toward our verses obstinate. obstinate. Because it never ends. Never ends. By no means, indeed, he has been to our verses stubborn, obstinate. Yeah. I will cover him with arduous torment. Laborious punishment. Honestly, I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah. Indeed, he thought and he deliberated. Yeah. The plotters and the planners. Yeah. Indeed. The plotters and the planners. Yeah. The Jesuits. Yeah. So may so may he be destroyed for how he deliberated. Yeah. For how he plotted. Then may he be destroyed for how he deliberated. Again, Allah repeats this. Yeah. Allah repeats it. And we know when Allah repeats a verse mm-hmm. in the Quran, it's, yeah. it's significant. فَقُتِلَ كَيْفَ قَدَّرْ ثُمَّ قُتِلَ كَيْفَ قَدَّرْ Then he considered again. ثُمَّ نَظَرْ Then he looked. This is such a powerful uh, part of the Quran. Ah, so powerful. Absolutely. ثُمَّ عَبَسَ وَبَسَرْ then he frowned and scowled. Thumma adbara wa astakbar. Then he astakbar. Astakbar. Yeah. Was sorry. Yes. Wa. Astakbar. When he joined it, I think it's astakbar. Wa astakbar. Yeah. Wa astakbar. Thumma adbara. What is it? Wa astakbar. Wa astakbar. Yeah. When he joined it, it's wa astakbar. Yeah. Um. Then he turned his back and was proud. Yeah, arrogance. You can picture who Allah is speaking of. Yeah, absolutely. And said, This is not but a magic imitated. What is magic? This Quran, isn't it? This Quran, this is what they say. Yeah, yeah they want to reject it. 
in yeah not this but the word of a human being so this is what they would say isn't it when prophet muhammad come with this uh, this is just the words of a man yeah they try to relegate this it's just a magic yeah and what does allah say soon i will admit him in hell soccer 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 so i think that's a special type of hell just like uh, Firdaus is maybe a special type of... Uh, Severe. Yeah. Because Allah gives it a name. And, and exactly. what is a the name. name? A name is a distinction. And look what he says. And what can make you know what is Sakar? I, I, I just stop for a second. I know we have to wrap up. But yeah. uh, in, in, the, in that verse, wh why does Allah say, what can make you know what is Sakar? It means that nobody can know... On, but the one who experiences it. Mm. What can make you know? There is nothing that can make you know, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like Janato Firdos, like two extremes. Like you yeah. will, you don't know. You cannot That's consider. what it seems like to me. Agree. I think so. This yeah. is the complete other side. Not it lets remain. It lets nothing remain and leaves nothing unburned. Yeah. Meaning, meaning it consumes absolutely everything, I think. Um, scorching the human skin. Yeah, this is serious stuff. And here is the famous. And here it is. Here it is. Over, over sucker, over sucker are over 19 sucker. angels. Over sucker, yeah. Over sucker are 19 angels. 19 angels, yeah. And this is the final bit. So I will, we'll look at. So this is the lengthy one. After all of that, this is the lengthy mm -hmm. ayah. And so let's just actually read this bit. And we have not made the keepers of the fire except angels. So it's definitely 19 angels. And we have not made their number except as a trial for those who disbelieve. And those who are given the scripture will be convinced. And those who have believed will increase in faith. And those who are given the scripture and the believers will not doubt. And that those who in whose heart is disease, i.e. hypocrisy, and the disbelievers will say, what does Allah intend by this as an example? Mm. For us, as we read this, what we're doing, is our faith increasing or de decreasing? Mm. As we're reading this, as we're connecting this and understanding this, is our faith increasing or decreasing? I'm asking Increasing. You. Increasing, yeah. And what do they do? What does Allah mean by this? Mm. What does Allah intend by this as an example? Thus does Allah send astray whom he wills and guide whom, whom he wills. And none knows the soldiers of your Lord except him. And it what? is not but a reminder to humanity. Why? Okay, uh, if you look at the uh, below translation, the Sahih International is good. But look at the uh, Mufti Tariq. I, I don't know who this person is. Mm. But this, uh, this translation caught my attention. Because... Mm. And we did not make wardens of the fire, but angels. So angels are the warden of the fire. Mm. And did not fix their number, but as a test for mm. those who disbelieve. Mm -hmm. And in Sahih International, it says, we have not made the keepers of the fire except angels. Mm. And we have not made their number except as a trial. Mm. So what Allah is saying, mm. that the number of angels over this sakar, mm. over this fire... Mm. That itself is a test. Yeah. So I don't know, like, why. Of course, it's Allah's wisdom, mm. but it, it's like, like, why this number, right? But Allah says He made that number mm. a test for those that will experience this fire. Mm. So what these people, in my opinion, what they're doing, they know because the ones who write our history, they are esoteric people. They know. Mm. They are mocking this number. They are mocking this number, and they are revisioning history, and uh, and uh, planning events in a way to mock this number nineteen to tell Allah that it's not a test for us. We will overcome this. You know, well, well, does I that make sense? Yeah, yeah, sense absolutely, to? absolutely. And I'll just add to that: what is nineteen? This is what David has said. Nineteen is Alpha and Omega. The first number and the last number. Exactly. So what you is, just answered my question. Yeah. Why? Why Allah? Oops. So what is? So what is? What is Alpha and Omega? Alpha and Omega is Allah. Yeah. He's he's started the. Proven it. He's proven it with through symbols. That okay. It's now something has come to my mind, brother. Always. Yeah. It's like 
you know how Allah is saying in this verse, he did not put this number of angels over this fire, but as a test. Mm. In, in it's like even in the in the test itself, in the in the punishment itself, why has Allah put 19? Because it's the start and the end, and Allah is the start and the end. That's These right. people don't believe. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. These people don't believe that Allah is the start and the end. They believe they're the end. Mm -hmm. So, like they are mocking that, but Allah is saying that. The start and the end, which is the punishment will be their end and it will continue forever. That is also according to Allah's name. You know, he is the start and the end. Does mm -hmm. that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to show you something. Sun and moon. Very quickly. So sun. Man, this was so deep. Sun, moon. Ah, there is. Sun, moon mentioned 19 times together. So I'll just leave, I'll leave you with this as well. So if you look at this, so David, okay. So in the Quran, can you see this on screen? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So how many times is sun mentioned in the Quran? 33. And apparently what David is saying is to, the reason why they use 19 and 33 is to get to 33, you have to go through 19 apparently. He's got all kinds of ways to explain this, right? Mm -hmm. I can't even begin. Well, all I can tell you is from my own research in sun and moon in the Quran that the sun, the word ashams, is mentioned in the Quran 33 times. But what's mm -hmm. more interesting is that within those 33 times that the sun is mentioned, the moon is mentioned with the sun 19 times. Yeah. So this becomes really like something significant now. An obvious signs are the night and the day and the sun and the moon. Do not prostrate to the sun or to the moon, but prostrate to Allah, the one who created them, if you worship him. It looks like this is ultimately what everything is today. You, everything boils down to these people worshipping either the sun or the moon. 19 and 33. That's what it looks like to me. 19 and 33. The moon is mentioned 19 times within the 33 ayats that the sun is mentioned. Well, well, what does the day start with? What The day starts with the sun. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. the day ends with the moon. Oh, well, brilliant beginning and end, Alpha and Omega. Beginning and the end for them, it's all about contradicting what Allah has said. Allah says He's the beginning and He's the end, mm. but they pervert this through the sun and moon worship because for them, the sun and the moon are the beginning and the end of the, the calendar, the time. Right, the time mm -hmm. for them is sun and the moon, but. They pervert this through also mocking of what Allah has said that He's the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. so that that is what's connecting it for me right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, but anyway, we'll see what we can get from David from his research. Um, but yeah, it does seem like the he seems to have connected reality with the Quran. He's connected nineteen in reality with nineteen in the Quran, and that's that's probably the biggest thing I think David has done. Uh, for the Muslims and the Quran he's yeah what no one else has been able to do and so we'll see what we can get from him inshallah but yeah that's yeah but that's it from me bro <laughs> time to go yeah and uh, I think suhoor for you suhoor for you suhoor is uh, over I was having suhoor while I was talking to you and uh, I'm just waiting for the white thread basically now Okay. okay. All right. So you you finish up your suhoor in the best way possible. Uh, sure. Yeah. May, may Allah bless your the fast coming up. And uh, yeah, we'll speak soon again, inshallah. Yeah. All right. Okay, brother. Take care. Speak All right, soon. my brother. See you, brother. Speak soon. Okay. Salam alaikum.